This is a pretty special day. Not only is it All Saints Day, but it's also Youth Sunday. And there's this idea that we do Youth Sunday and we have Sunday school programs because this is the church of tomorrow. Well, let me assure you that this is not the church of tomorrow. This is the church of right now. And thank God for that. Because this is where our energy is. This is where our hope lies. That the message and the love of Christ is continued because of our children. So this last week, Father Jason and I and folks from All Saints and Temple Beth Shalom and Rose Run Presbyterian Church gathered in prayer. Because somebody did something really bad. And somebody did something that was really mean that hurt a lot of people. And we were kind of put in our face this idea that sometimes people do really, really bad things to each other. And people hate each other. And people are mean to each other. And sometimes it can be overwhelming. But there's always hope. Because did you know that love is always greater than fear? Love is always greater than darkness. And love is greater than hate. And how do we know this? We know this for a lot of reasons. And not just because God told us. But all of the saints, saints are people who are in heaven that love Jesus, that also dealt with hate and also saw people at their worst, yet still loved. And so we have hope because of what the saints had done. People who we have known like our grandparents and maybe some of our parents, we know the people who have gone on before us are praying for us. And that gives us hope so that when we come to the altar and we pray, we're not just praying by ourselves, but all of the saints are praying for us. So what you need to know is that just because sometimes people are mean, and sometimes people do bad and hateful things, you still can be nice. Have you ever been in a really dark room, and you turn on just a little light, like a little match, and all of a sudden the darkness goes away? You are that light. And even though the world might seem dark and the world might seem like there's no niceness in it, you are the niceness. You are the light that makes darkness go away. And you're the light because Jesus lives inside of you. And Jesus is the light of the world. That gives us hope. That lets us know that end is not meanness. The end is not hatefulness. The end is love. Because you are love. So you can know that the end is not the end. The end is just the beginning of love. And we always have hope. So, what is hope? You heard Deacon Diana read in the Gospel reading about Lazarus. And Mary said to Jesus, If you would have been here, if you would have been here, maybe Lazarus wouldn't have died. Many of us this week have looked at the darkness of our world and said, God, if you were there, this wouldn't have happened. If, had you have been present, you could have stopped this. And Jesus has always been there. I'm reminded of a sermon I heard from a particular priest. Maybe you've heard the same sermon from Father Rick. When life is its darkest, when life seems like there's no hope and there's brokenness around us, Jesus has already been there. His light has already been there. His hope has already been there. So when we look at this brokenness in the world, Jesus has already been there and been present because this world is not the end. Jesus came so that death doesn't have the final say, but death has been broken because of what Jesus did. Death has been conquered because of the light of Christ's resurrection. You know what? Somebody said get nervous when Father Kevin stops with his notes. Can you hold those for me? Thank you. Death is not the final say. This world in its hatefulness and its brokenness doesn't conquer the life and the joy and the blessings that come from serving a God who has conquered death. 
Because he is the light. And how do we know resurrection is real? Because last night, when the sun went down and the earth was cold and dark and it was a little afraid and scary because all the leaves began to fall and I felt alone, guess what happened this morning? The sun rose and the sky was beautiful and pink and rose colored and red and gorgeous because light broke through the darkness. We enter into fall when the leaves fall and things die. And we got all oh, winter's coming, death is coming. But guess what? Once we get through winter, spring comes back around and the earth begins to bring forth life again in vibrancy and joy and hope. And is it any wonder that creation sings to resurrection when God created the earth? The king of resurrection, the king of our hope. So why would death be the final say in our lives? Why would darkness and hate be the final say? Because at the end of the hatefulness and at the end of the darkness, joy brings forth and springs forth from our lives because God brings eternal life through his son. So we have hope. We have joy. And so we don't have to kind of collapse into this darkness around us, but know that there's resurrection. And we can love in the face of darkness. We can have joy in the face of darkness because it's not about us, it's about him and what he's done so we can love and love boldly. In the ancient church, hope was represented by an anchor. And I remember when I was a little boy, I think maybe 10 or 11, living up in Portland, Maine, or as I used to say when I was a kid, Portland. When I was a kid in Portland, I had the opportunity to go on the USS John F. Kennedy, which was an aircraft carrier. And I remember going out to the aircraft carrier and it's how huge and big it was. And the only thing keeping that aircraft carrier from floating away was two little anchors. Two little tiny anchors in the front of that ship that went underneath the water and somehow kept that giant ship and 5,000 sailors from floating away. We have hope in the silent resurrection of Jesus Christ who conquered death. And so even though things might seem dark and gloomy, our hope rests assured in Jesus Christ. My hope is in him. My hope is in him who came and died for me, who in death at the darkest hour of the world conquered death. It was through his conquering of death that joy springs forth because we have something that gets us through this darkness. This is not the end. This is not the end. This is our motivation to be forward and to stand up and say, despite this hate, we love. And I know it's been hard. It's hard to see all of this around us. But let me assure you of something. And here's where the beauty of the church lies. And here's where the beauty of community is. When you are too sad to find hope, when you feel too broken to feel like there's resurrection, know this, your brother and sister next to you will pray for you and they will be your hope when you have no hope. They will carry your burdens and they will carry you until you once again find your faith. That is community. And know this, Jesus has already been there. When you feel sad, you go forward and you love anyway. When you feel broken, you find peace in knowing that we serve a God who's alive, who has conquered death. The same God, the same God who rose Lazarus when he stunk and said, darkness, death, leave him. The same God who created the sun and the moon and the stars, that there's resurrection and sunrise in the morning, the same God who brings spring, the same God who brings love, the same God who brings salvation, is the same God that was in the burning bush in Exodus, who said, I am that I am. Jesus Christ is that I am. And that brings us peace and hope. So, you are an example to us on how to love. You are an example of us of how to have hope. And all the saints pray for us to give us strength 
that we too will go in this broken world and proclaim that there's a hope. There's a hope in Jesus Christ who is not dead, who is not in some cold, dark grave, but has been resurrected and sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for us so that we could live. This is not the end. This is opportunity to stand up and be bold and be the light of Christ. Amen.